before we move to our open microphone speakers, I want to set the context very quickly. I called this special meeting today of the Dallas City Council to provide the public an opportunity to speak and share their concerns regarding the city's response to the protests that have been occurring all over our city um, regarding the killing of George Floyd on May 25th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is the time for us to listen and learn and seek answers from each other, and I'm pleased that we're doing so tonight. I also wanted to allow the city council to have the opportunity to exercise our oversight function to ask questions and get answers on the record from the city manager and the police chief. Over 200 people signed up to speak today, and I have to say I'm very glad that they did. To our speakers, your mayor, city council, the chair of the community police oversight board, our city staff, and the public are listening to you today. And before I turn it over to our very capable um, city secretary, I'm going to make this announcement in terms of our timing for tonight in terms of public speakers. Um, according to our rules, we ask people to provide an address when they sign up to speak. If you signed up to speak and you provided a city of Dallas address, we are going to be providing you with a minute and a half each to speak. And if you did not, meaning if you did not provide an address at all, or you provided a non city of Dallas address, you will be given one minute to speak. And then we will be um, able to hopefully proceed uh, relatively expeditiously to our um, second part of our, our meeting, which is um, to talk with our police chief and city manager. So with that, Madam Secretary, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Line. Speakers must observe the same rules of propriety, decorum, and good conduct applicable to members of the city council. Any speaker making personal, impertinent, profane, or slanderous remarks, or who becomes boisterous while addressing the city council will be removed from the session. The mayor has announced your time. When your time is up, please stop and address your comments to Mayor Johnson only. We'll begin with your first speaker, Adam Schwartz. Adam Schwartz. peaceful right amendment protest into a potentially massive. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Councilman, can you hear me? Mr. Mayor? I can now, but I can hear you now. All right. Um, I wanted to thank right, everybody for the time and their attention to this matter and hearing the community's voice on their perception of what happened. Um, I'm an attorney in the community and I was down there as an observer and I ended up on the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge with folks. My perception of what happened was that police tactically or tactically turned a peaceful, rightful First Amendment protest into a potentially massive and dangerous conflict by herding the protesters onto the bridge, kettling us and utilizing military equipment and tactics to enforce an unjustified goalpost shift. We were told the curfew zone was expanded. That ended up not being true. And I get that the police were trying to make a point. I think they made it, but I think it was the wrong one. Um, if anyone ever told us not to go on the bridge, and I was right up front, I, I didn't see it or hear any indication of that. Uh, instead, what I happened to observe was we got U-turned by the police while we were walking. We just simply blocked the path with cars. And then um, as we walked north on Riverfront Boulevard, officers were kind of quiet as they blocked our path and corralled us up the bridge. Uh, the only kind of weird thing to note was I saw a smoke bomb being loaded into a launcher and took note of that, right? Um, there may have been a point when there was a single squad car in the intersection and the march organizers directed protesters to calmly and peacefully walk around and chant their message. Um, you know, once we got up on the bridge, it was already blocked off 
on the other side. And as protesters know, he chanted, yeah. hands up, don't Three shoot. Three seconds. I'm going to urge you to go ahead and redirect funds from the 1033 program. I know that you're going to need Mr. to remain. Schwartz, that is your time. Thank you so much. Stephanie Johnson. Ah, there we are. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let me know when my time has begun. It's begun now. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council, and others who may be watching. My name is Stephanie Johnson, and I am a resident of Dallas. I am speaking with you today also as a United States veteran. I always believed in the need to protect the words of the Constitution, like the right to assemble and the right to free speech. These are some of the most very basic threads that are woven in our tapestry of our identity. But you have pulled those threads and our fabric is frayed, it is torn and worn out. The very weavers responsible for the preservation of our city's candidates, you've done a gross disservice. You chose to treat the people who give you the opportunity to speak for them as though they had no right to cry out with pain over the continuous practices of systemic racism and overt murder. You have weakened who we are and who we could be. You patronized us with talking points and response, and instead of being proactive and using your position for good, you chose to live in a reactive fear. The desire for photo ops was first, and we saw right through it. Now our torn fabric needs to be repaired, and you need to acknowledge that is in a shambles. You must, and I am challenging all of you, to meet the citizens where they are, to be quiet and to listen, because it's gonna take a lot more than photos on Instagram. It's gonna take real work and it's gonna require real change. I'm hurt, I am disgusted, and most importantly, I am motivated and I know yeah. how to sew. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Jason Marshall. Marshall or Mitchell's a Marshall? Marshall. Marshall, okay. Jason Marshall. Jason Marshall. Any luck connecting Mr. Marshall? If not, we just need to move on to the next name. Yeah, Zandra Ellis. Any luck with Miss Ellis? Okay. Sandra Ellis. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, Ms. Ellis, please go ahead. Thank you so much for your patience. No problem. And thank you for allowing us to speak today. My name is Sandra Ellis. I'm a community counselor in Dallas, and I'm also one of the co-founders of Foundation 45. 
one of my main concerns in the response from DPD is the amount of trauma that they have created in this community. Unfortunately, I have had countless calls of people having depressive symptoms, anxiety attacks. And these are people that were not even at the protests. For the people who were at the protests, people who even already had pre-existing conditions, they are now having nightmares. They are having disassociative episodes. And for what? What we did that, what we did, and I say we, because we're all culpable. Militarization of police department is traumatic. And if you look at any other research, it shows that de-escalation is the cornerstone of modern justice. And that's what we are expected to do. That's what I expect of Dallas. One of the things that's important to understand is we are in an abusive relationship at this time. Even this meeting, it's just the reconciliation part of us to go back into the abusive relationship we have. As a matter of fact, the way that it goes is we go from tension to outbursts to reconciliation, and then we go into the honeymoon phase. I'm tired of the honeymoon phase. We need action because people are hurting. And if we do not want this to get worse, if we don't want to turn into LA, we must do better. Community policing must be there. Yeah. Thank you so much. That is your time. Jason Marshall. Jason Marshall, are you there? Hello, this Marshall. Is Jason Marshall. Hello, can you yes, hear me? Please go. Yes, yes, you can continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jason Marshall, and I live in Uptown. I haven't been at any of the protests. On Monday night, the police department took a big risk on the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. If those peaceful protesters had followed the examples of our civil rights heroes, they would have kept marching, and they would have been beaten up or killed by law enforcement. The DPD risked turning our bridge into the Edmund Pettus Bridge. They risked turning our bridge into the next Kent State. Dallas PD took that risk for what? To issue citations for obstructing a roadway in a city without sidewalk? There's an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. This is the appointed time for accountability. The mayor and council have a binary choice. You either hold DPD accountable right now or you endorse what happened on that bridge. Either fire the chief, one or more deputy chiefs, and one or more majors this week, or you endorse what happened on that bridge. And we don't want to hear excuses, inquiries, or political games. That time is over. I know some of you are scared of the police union and your Highland Park donors, but it's a new time. And in this time, you need to be scared of your voters. Our mayor was elected with just 50,000 votes, and many of our councilmen with just 4,000 votes. Either hold the police leadership accountable by firing people this week or you'll be held accountable at the polls. Thank you. Thank you. Miguel Solis. Mr. Mayor. Solis? Yes. A minute and a half. You got it. Thanks. Go ahead, sir. Colleagues, I'm speaking to you today as a friend and a counterpart, offering a hand of collaboration during these days of racial reckoning. Today, Dallas streets burn with righteous indignation because the senseless murder of George, George Floyd, God rest his soul, is yet another chapter in the ongoing American tragedy that's seen people of color systematically disenfranchised and oppressed. Protesters are filling our streets as a part of a centuries-long struggle for recognition of black and brown self-worth from those in positions of authority, because like in Minneapolis and other urban communities, Dallas leaders have consistently failed them. I'm one of them. We have failed them. And until we explicitly acknowledge that, we're not going to be able to move forward with proper recognition. As policymakers, we can't keep doing the same thing. We cannot keep missing the mark. This moment's our chance to make the bold, courageous decisions our forefathers chose not to. Dallas can show America the way. And the way we do that is twofold. We need to have a comprehensive policy of recognition and reparation. First, our city has got to explicitly atone for our local sins. We need to do a thorough analysis of what our institutions have done to cause us inequality and then change it. And then second, 
we need to deliver equitable reparation. We know the neighborhoods that need targeted restitution, and we can do it through bonds, displacement policy, housing policy, broadband connectivity, and so much more. I want to thank you for your service. Mayor, I want to thank you for your service. And I offer my support to you in helping us get you through these troubles. Thank you, Ben, for your time. Thank you so much. Lodisha Scott. Ms. Scott, are you there? Hello. Yes, Ms. Scott, you're you're good to go. You can start now. Okay. Okay. Hello, Ms. Scott. Yes, I'm here. Please please go ahead. Yes, I'm Lodisha Scott. And I come before you today to speak on, you know, this protest and what happened to George Floyd. I think it's been so many years, it's time that we put a stop to this and we stand up in unity instead of being divided. We need to come together and be unified as a people. And it's not even based on the color of skin. It shouldn't be. It should be based on the character and the heart of a person. We're all the same, you know. And what's been going on with the protesting is ridiculous. This don't have nothing to do with George Floyd's death. Breaking and destroying your city, and then you got to look back at your city one day, and it's going to be a pure mess. It does not have nothing to do with the death of Mr. George Floyd. And my heart goes out to all of us. Thank you. You're welcome. Jared. Thank you. Jared Willis. Mr. Willis. Mr. Willis. Are you there, Mr. Willis? We'll come back. John Fullenwinder. John Fullenwinder, are you there? Okay, Mr. Fullenwinder, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Wonderful, you can start now, thank you. All right, thank you. I'm John Fullenwinder, 1851 Fuller Drive in Dallas with Mothers Against Police Brutality. I will address police use of deadly force. Mr. Mayor, the city of Dallas should adopt more specific policies restricting the use of deadly force. For example, don't shoot if a suspect is unarmed like when DPD killed Michael Moorhead in 1970 and Clinton Allen in 2013. Don't shoot if a suspect is running away, like when DPD killed Juan Reyes in 1984 and Elias Portillo in 2016. Don't shoot if a suspect is sitting in a stalled car, like when DPD killed Genevieve Dawes in 2017. Don't shoot if a suspect is not armed with a gun, but is instead holding a screwdriver, like when DPD killed Jason Harrison in 2014. Don't shoot if an officer is working alone, like when DPD killed Kenneth Wayne Perry in 1976 and James Harper in 2012. For the past 50 years, Dallas has had one of the most unaccountable police forces in this country. We have to find another way. If you are serious about real change, then I offer you my support. But like many people, if you are not serious, I offer you my unrelenting opposition. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Jared, Jared Willis. Mr. Willis, are you connected? Okay. 
unmute. So, Mr. Willis, can you unmute? Can you hear us? Showing that you are connected but muted. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Okay. Francisco Espinosa. Francisco Espinosa, are you there? Francisco Espinosa. Hello. Hello, yes, can you Mr. hear me? Espinosa, go Hello, ahead. Yes, we can. Go Please ahead. let me know when my time has started. It's starting now. All right. All right. Thanks for letting us uh, have this venue for talking. Uh, City Council must be fund out PD. It is ludicrous that taxpayer money is being used to terrorize and infringe upon the constitutional rights of peaceful protesters, as we saw this past weekend. Chief Hall continues to excuse her officers' behaviors instead of owning up the abuse of power. The bloodshed by the citizens of Dallas this past weekend is on her hands, and Dallas PD will be staying as long as she is at the helm. She needs to resign now. People of Dallas are scared out of an out-of-control police department, an armed militia that is accountable to no one. The people of Dallas are tired of the looting, the looting of our city budget for military-grade equipment that's being used to harm civilians. The looting of our city resources gifted to private businesses, the looting of our justice system by a racist out of control police department who deemed themselves judge, jury, and executioners. City Council must divest from Dallas PD and reallocate those funds to community infrastructure and health safety measures. Our elected leaders must work to radically transform police culture in the city and end the war on black people now. We will remember your actions during this critical moment. Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Thank you. Yvette Balazay. Uh, hello? Yes, can you hear ma'am. me? Yes, you can, can. You can start now. All right. I'm just here to tell people that um, there are black domestic terrorists in Dallas exploiting George Floyd's sacrifice, so be careful who you protest with. Marching uh, with the wrong people in Dallas, Texas can get you killed. When our five uh, police officers were murdered in the massacre, the black commissioner, John Wally Price, said our officers had it coming. Uh, people need to know that Price's main follower and orchestrator of that massacre march is Dominique Alexander, who was found guilty of fracturing a two-year-old baby's skull, and he also beat up his woman last year. So does that baby's black life matter? When exactly do black lives matter? They also exploit children, like in this pic you see of his follower, Shanita Cleveland. The ignorance it takes to mentally abuse kids into thinking all cops want to kill them is incomprehensible. A few bad cops do exist. Kids need another difference and the process to get rid of them, but it takes years of patience to change policy. John Wally Price is the commissioner over the county jail, and I haven't seen these people blame John Wally Price for anything. Instead, they direct hate towards my DA, the mayor, and Chief Hall. And just so people know, they hate our current chief of police, Renee Hall, and they love our ex-chief, David Brown, because ex-chief David Brown's son murdered a police officer on Father's Day, and that's what they stand for. Price's followers with Alexander fooled people to march with them. They convinced people to feel sorry for them instead of the real victim, like in the case of Botham John. The same group raised money for themselves instead of his family. It is impossible for council members to do what people are asking. Reforming the police department is our job. I got dirty cop Shane that Owens removed. That's your time, ma'am. Thank you so much. Christina Rodriguez. <laughs> Hello, yes. Um, my name is Christina Rodriguez, and I live in District 3. I have been a high school teacher of government for five years, and I currently serve as LULAC's Deputy Director for Youth across 32 counties in Texas. I'm here to speak about the use of deadly force by Dallas Police Department. When I first started teaching, my students hated the police. The memory of 16-year-old Jose Cruz, who was shot in the back and killed as he ran away from an off-duty Farmers Branch police officer, was fresh in their memory. You see, when our youth watches the news and sees atrocities like these on social media, this stems into a deep mistrust and hatred for the police department, all departments. If you look at the protesters, they are Dallas youth. DPD needs to reinvest in our city's youth and rebuild the damage that tear gassing and shooting peaceful protesters with rubber bullets has caused. Our kids were already facing the trauma of not finishing the school year with their peers and suffering from depression. They have been re-traumatized by you injuring them while expressing their First Amendment rights, which we have all told them to exercise. 
Stop using rubber bullets and tear gas immediately on protesters like those on the bridge on Monday night and adopt the 10 demands shared by Mothers Against Police Brutality on restricting the use of deadly force and divestment from policing. Thank you. Thank you. John Hetzel. Hi, uh, John Hetzel, President of the Deep Bellum Foundation. Foundation. Uh, George Floyd, George Floyd's Floyd, Floyd, reminder of the progress we make towards, towards becoming an equal and just society. society. Deep Bellum is proud that it can serve as a venue for peaceful demonstration of the need for meaningful change. Meaningful change. In the neighborhood, we agree with the need for tangible progress and show the anger many feel. The vast majority of our business and property owners who are damaged by the weakest variety continue to strongly and publicly support peaceful protesters. Lap and inventory can be replaced, but lives cannot. We agree with the city of Dallas to institute a curfew on Sunday. Stop the looting and rioting more quickly, create a space for the peaceful protest demanding progress on equality and justice and focus instead of more extreme unrest. Ebom is a neighborhood that needs nighttime business to thrive, and the neighborhood is effectively shut down while the curfew is in effect. This coming on the heels of COVID has been hard, and many of our businesses are on the brink. Lost revenue is many times more than the cost of the cost. Again, we fully support the decision to institute a curfew, and we ask that it be lifted as soon as it is reasonable to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Courtney Garrett. Ms. Garrett, are you there? Ms. Garrett. I think we have it okay, now. Yes. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. My name is Courtney Garrett, and I'm here representing Downtown Dallas, Inc. to also address the curfew. Downtown Dallas, Inc. has been a vocal advocate for this tool, which was one of the most difficult decisions we've ever had to make. As a neighborhood, community, and economic advocate, asking our citizens to move inside when there is so much to be said and so much to be done goes against our very mission, but our neighborhood needed safety. Now, let me be clear. We fully recognize that the damage done on May 29th and 30th was not done by the many. It was done by the few. And since then, we've returned to the true purpose of these demonstrations, bringing focus back to where it needs to be, George Floyd, the fight for justice and actions toward equity. We need this tool to be utilized in the most dire of situations, but lift it as soon as it is safe so our small businesses can have hope for survival and our community can safely return to raising awareness and confronting the hardest of conversations. The heart of our city should be a place for all. Downtown is a place to come together, a place for public dialogue and free speech, and a place to draw attention and action to remedy injustice. I thank the city of Dallas for taking action to protect our neighborhood and for reopening our streets as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Felder. Mr. Felder, are you there? Mr. Felder. Okay, we'll move on. Oh, you found him? Okay. Hello. Can you Mr. hear me? Felder, are you there? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. As a former Dallas City Councilman and President of the Dallas branch of the NAACP, I happen to be an African American and I have a unique perspective on how the Council works. In addition, I know most of you personally and professionally. The City of Dallas is in trouble especially the Dallas Police Department. The DPD has a history and decades of mistreatment and abuse of unarmed African-American men and women. For example, in 2013, DPD officer Brian Burgess ran over Fred Bradford, who was just riding a bicycle. Mr. Bradford did not have a weapon. He sustained a broken collarbone, broken ribs, a broken back, and he died of his injuries. Uh, Brian Burgess uh, appealed his um, firing and was rehired. Now, the key is, are there any officers on the force that have been involved in, mur in murders and abuse of force? 
that loophole needs to be closed and those need to be rooted out. Mayor and council, this upcoming budget, you will have some tough choices to make. I'd like to make some suggestions. Enhance de-escalation training, eliminate qualified immunity, establish a watch list of officers involved in shootings, assaults, and abuse of authority. Transfer the police civil service appeal cases to the Dallas Oversight Board as disposition. Require officers to live in the city of Dallas as a condition that of hiring and maintaining time, employment. Thank you very much. Adam Ford. Mr. Schwartz. Mr. Schwartz. Okay, we're going to move to the next okay. name. You're in Brown. Please confirm that you can hear me. Yes, please, please continue. Yes, so these protests are being mischaracterized as being just about the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, but that's not what they're about. They're about systematic injustices that have been perpetrated by the police force, not just in the city of Dallas, but throughout the entire country ever since the founding of the very first police force in the United States. I have a list of demands that me and other protesters on that bridge want implemented within the city of Dallas so that hopefully we can be the first to lead, to lead the country in the fight to justice. We need to abolish no-knock raids. We need to end qualified immunity. Abolish civil asset forfeiture. Abolish the cash bail for petty crimes, misdemeanors, based off the principle of the presumption of innocence. And those are just a couple of our demands due to the shortage of time that I have. We need to abolish qualified immunity because when officers are not held accountable for things they do, even accidentally, like citizens are, it causes a disconnect where officers get away with events like what happened at Margaret, Hill, Margaret Hunt Bridge, where police fired tear gas and rubber bullets at peaceful protesters. Time, Thank you so much. Raquel Cunningham. Hi, can you hear me? Ms. Cunningham, please continue. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Raquel Cunningham. It is an honor to be here as I've never spoken before at one of these meetings. In the last five years, the city of Dallas has spent more than $10 million to sell lawsuits against police officers. This is at the cost of taxpayers, and it takes away from other needs within our state, such as officer training. With the current Dallas protests, I'm in solidarity with these peaceful protesters and countless others, um, as I am very passionate about these issues. I've seen some police officers kneeling with protesters, and I feel this is a great step to show unity within our community, but we need to do more. I request the following. One, our council demands that the National Guard only be used during curfew hours when they are absolutely needed to protect businesses. Two, demand that the police issue warnings when it's close to curfew hours and allow protesters to leave in a peaceful manner. In response to long-term change to end police brutality, I request the following. One, challenge our state to increase training so our officers can be better prepared to, on how to handle stressful situations. Revisit code of conduct and disciplinary guidelines to hold police more accountable in the incident of police brutality. Two, be more transparent and make the police brutality investigations public. There needs to be a systematic change or we will continue to have these protests. 
My request is that we work together to put laws into place that protect all people and treat all people equally. And please remember, not standing for, some, for yourself makes you a victim, but not standing for others makes you an accomplice. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Melissa Perry is not present at this time, and Deanna LaFay is also not present at this time. We'll now move to Jerry Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins. Are you connected? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. You can okay, start. Thank you. thank you. My name is Jerry Hawkins. I'm at 3850 Northwest Highway, District 13. Um, I'm representing Dallas Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation. Um, I'm here to talk about the city and what we need to do. Uh, that I was part of a, a resiliency plan that the city has not followed. Uh, that resiliency plan was a, a plan for equity for the city. Uh, the city has not done an internal racial equity audit. Um, the city of Dallas also has a history of racism. Um, from 1931 to 1968, the city of Dallas legalized racial segregation in its city charter, it has not done anything to address that. Uh, we are living, living in a pandemic. Our equity office at the city has not produced any race and ethnicity data when it comes to our communities. There's an unknown number when it comes to private clinics. Uh, the city of Dallas pays the Dallas County uh, for health. Uh, we have not had any information we've asked for that. Uh, the police department also has an abusive and racist history. In the 1980s, this, the city of Dallas Police Department was the worst police department in the country. This is, this is heavily documented. We have not done anything to um, heal from that wound, particularly um, police shootings in our uh, city and state um, for the last five years. Research has shown, particularly from Harvard, that shootings uh, of unarmed Black people affect the mental health of Black residents. That is your time, sir. Thank you very much. We're going to go back to Adam Swartz. Adam Swartz. Hello. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Mr. I hope Swartz. you can hear me. Yes, we can now. Oh. You can start. Oh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, uh, Chief Hall, and uh, council members. I'm Adam Swartz, as you know, from Council District Number 9. Thanks for your attention. Um, I wanted to begin by first stating that uh, um, uh, midnight last night, Police Chief Paul issued a new uh, duty to intervene policy. I think that's a good and right policy, um, uh, but it's not even kind of the first step in the marathon. But uh, thank you, Chief Paul. I wanted to acknowledge that. And um, as Mayor uh, Johnson, you and Chief Paul had noted, uh, George Perry Floyd was killed in Minneapolis, Minnesota by police officers on Memorial Day this year. Let me add also that on August 10th of 2016, Anthony Tempa died during a similar detention, very similar circumstances by Dallas Police Sergeant Kevin Mansell, officers Danny Vasquez and Dustin Dillard. <clears throat> As a, uh, my time is short, I'd like to request a redress of all of these grievances. Um, the first step really I would suggest is immediately demilitar demilitarize our city workers. No rubber missiles, no rubber bullets, no flashbang grenades. Decommission all military grade equipment, please, that is used by city workers, especially the police, and refuse all equipment donated or handed down from the National Guard or federal authorities. Second, please I'll issue a proclamation that officers should de-escalate and actively avoid the use of force immediately. Third, please change incentives for city workers um, so that thank you very much, law sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mark McDaniel. Mr. McDaniel. Mark McDaniel, can you hear us? Okay, let's move on to the next. Allison McMahon, McMahon. Now, 
Alpha McMahon, are you there? Yes. Can you hear us? Thank you. Yes. Okay, great. Go ahead. Thank you. I live in District 2. This is my first time speaking in a session, but I felt very strongly that I needed to share with our council members what I have witnessed in the past week and its impact. I have been horrified by what I've seen unfold in our city. When police show up to a peaceful protest and riot gear, they are already showing aggression. When state troopers and the National Guard are deployed, it is a show of force. When a 7 p.m. curfew is set after two days of protest is an assertion of power. What I saw looked like the criminalization of dissent. None of these efforts de-escalate, but only attempt to shut down free speech and make the situation worse. What we have seen in so many videos of it and images of Dallas police firing tear gas and rubber bullets at peaceful protesters is just wrong. I know that the incidents we've seen are not actions by the entire Dallas force, but these actions do cast a dark shadow on the entire Dallas Police Department and breaks the trust with the community. We need to demilitarize our police. We need more training for our officers in de-escalation tactics and limit use of force. We need to ensure that Dallas can and does have police salaries that compete with surrounding areas. We need our police to continue having conversations with the community. We should have come together as a city, yet we were divided. What happened to our protesters, our citizens, our neighbors this weekend and Monday never should have happened and should never happen again. Thank you, Mayor and City Council for your time. You are welcome. Thank you. Tanya Reagan has canceled at the Pemberton is not present. Ben Struby. Ben Strube, Struby, excuse me if I got that wrong. Are you there? Okay, we'll move to the next if we can't find Mr. Struby or Strube. I'm not sure. It's Ruby. Okay. Maisha Luster. Maisha Luster. No. I heard something there. Is that... Okay, let's move on to the next if we can't. So David B. B. Lobos is not present. D'Angelo Bowens is not present. Uh, Frankie Wilson. Frankie Wilson, are you there? Frankie Wilson. Ben Struby. Ben Struby. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Please continue. Uh, before my time begins, the audio visual difficulties, um, I hope that we can possibly make sure everyone has had a chance to speak. Let me know when my time has started. It started already, sir. All right, Mr. Mayor, we know that police policy is not being written by the people. 
it is written by those who make campaign contributions. Earlier this week, the eye of a 26-year-old protester was ripped by a bullet fired by a sponge gun as he walked peacefully to a group of police. The gun was donated by a lobbying group called Safer Dallas, Better Dallas. Sponge guns promised to save lives. They did not save the life of Tony Tempa, the disabled man who called 911 pleading for help, who was killed by police an hour later as officers laughed and joked about waking him up for school. Blinding us instead of killing us is not progress. I ask that you go back to all of your campaign donors and tell them that we the people will continue to march for freedom because we have no tears to spare for your broken glass until you mourn our broken bodies. Thank you. Thank you. Jesse Solis. Let me get this in Hold on one second. Sorry. Okay, members, I've just gotten a suggestion from our city secretary based on our technological um, situation here that I'm going to lay out to you guys. And if there is any objection, this is what we'll do. We think it might actually help everyone. What we've been trying to do is, is respect the speakers list, the order it's in, and call the speakers in that order. The way it works on our end, though, is that means our tech people have to find that person and get them connected. And that's slowing things down a bit. So the proposal is for us to take the people in the order that the tech um, folks have them in their queue, and then we will find them on the list and just go. So we'll be jumping around on our speakers list members and won't be in order. But if you don't have any objection to that, then that's what we'll do. We normally go in order, but to make this go more efficiently so folks aren't waiting on the phone all night, we'll just take them in the order that they come up and we'll find them on our list. Is there any objection to that? Okay. Done. Sounds good. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, any objection at all? Okay. Can so you tell? Can you yeah. tell if there's city of Dallas residents or non-residents? Though is that going to be? Madam Secretary, can you speak to that really quickly? Thank you, Mayor. So I'm going to have them state their name, and then I will find on the list if they are a city of Dallas resident, and I will apply the appropriate time based on the mayor's instructions at the beginning of the meeting. Did you hear that, Chairwoman Gates? Yes, thank you. Okay, so we're going to proceed with this new approach and see if it helps us I, at all. So we apologize. I, I, uh, to the, oh, sorry, who was that? Um, that will do it. I, hey, I just how are you doing? Doing well. I, I was going to ask, is there any way, um, because I think some people feel that because they were given a number that maybe like uh, they weren't or they, they aren't like um, really alerts and they don't know when they're in the queue. So is it possible for them to for us to just say the next speaker um, ahead of time to give a he like a, a heads up of who is on deck. Okay, we're gonna get told another option right now. So Madam Secretary, uh, go ahead and speak to another option that they've come up with. Thank you, Mayor. So another option is we could unmute all of the speakers and I will just call their names and when I, when I call their names, they can just speak, but all speakers will be unmuted. So they're allowed to speak. So everyone's line would be unmuted at the same that's, time. So, so is, we'd hear anybody who has background noise or anything like that going yes. on. I don't know about that. Members, thoughts on that? Because that sounds like it might be a little chaotic. I mean, we have a, how many? I don't think that's going to work. I've been on. Can, yeah. can I suggest that maybe five yeah. names are called and five names are unmuted at a time? That's, that's, a, great suggestion. that's an interesting suggestion. Can we? Unmute five people at a time and call those five names. So there's only five people at any time who are unmuted, as opposed to 180 or so, or however many. Okay. Okay. As a suggestion: the city secretary would often call the five names and ask people to come to the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, we got you. We're actually try, we, we, we're agreeing to try that right now. We're just going to try to see if we can do five at a time. So we'll call five names, unmute those five people. 
and handle it that way, see if that works. Thank you all. Technology is very, very tricky here. So we appreciate the members of the public being patient with us. We are trying to do our best to accommodate all of you. A lot of names. Okay, so you ready to announce the five, Madam Secretary? Okay, go ahead. Jesse Solis, Stacy Monroe, Myra Fierro, Katie Jawan, the last name is J-A-W-A-D, Jawad, and Mark Fuentes. So your first speaker will be Jesse Solis. JC Solis. JC? Yes. Thank you. As a new member to the Dallas community, I was thrilled to move here last year. However, I am now terrified to be an active citizen of my new city. I want to be a vocal member of Dallas supporting the Black community and exercising my right to peaceful protest. But I've seen friends and loved ones in the past week met with military-grade equipment, tear gas, and bullets. I fear for their lives and for my own while exercising our constitutional rights, even in lawful ways. I urge you to specifically address in DPD ongoing violence towards peaceful protesters, move to de-escalation, demilitarization. Please hold persons accountable who have already physically and mentally harmed the protesters of the last week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stacy Monroe. Stacy Monroe. She logged off? Okay, next. Myra Fierro. Fierro. Myra Fierro. Myra Fierro. Hi. Can, can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. My name is Myra Fierro. I am a resident of District 7. Mr. Mayor, I want to talk to you today about timing. It was just about last year when we challenged the reinstatement of a lapsed juvenile curfew. We asked for 24-7 youth resource centers by using our rec centers with friend youth-friendly programming and counselors to address the reasons why minors would be out so late. Our city rushed to reinstate the curfew. Timing is everything. Yesterday, we remember Malik, who was a by innocent bystander lost to the violence in our streets. My, this week, my, we mourn for Jamaja. It is time to get our priorities straight. Oh, Investing no. in our community is public safety. My name is Myra when Fierro. we challenge the reinstatement of District 7, I want to talk to you today about timing. It was just about last year by using when we challenge the reinstatment of a lapsed youth juvenile programming. programming. We asked for 24 7 youth minors would be out by using our rec centers. Our city rushed to reinstate youth friendly programming and counselors to address the reasons why. Yesterday, we remember Malik, who was a bystander, lost to the violence in our streets. Timing is everything. Oh, my God. What, what happened there? Did we lose Did we lose her, or what happened? Okay, so she can you unmute her remote? Okay. Her time is up. Okay. Her time. Let's move on to the next name and we'll figure it out. Your next speaker will be number 83, Heidi Jawad. Heidi Jawad. Muting. Yes. Please continue. Thank you. Hello? Did we lose? That's how societal change has occurred, and we are grateful to our young people for shining a light in the darkness. 
We implore the Dallas Police Department and Dallas City officials to work with Mothers Against Police Brutality, founded by a grieving mother, Colette Flanagan, who lost her son, Clinton, and a grieving daughter, Sarah Mukuria, who lost her father to police violence. And that provides solutions to policing problems in our communities. We condemn the threats by President Trump to send in the military. His statement, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, is abhorrent and irresponsible and must be rejected by all law enforcement and military personnel. We hope every single elected official and public servant in Dallas will vehemently oppose President Trump's threat to send in their First Amendment rights. We are hoping because legislation and trainings only go so far. Finally, we urge City Hall to refuse all military-grade weapons under Federal Program 1030T, 1033, and immediately suspend all trainings associated with the Federal 1033 program. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Your next speaker will be Speaker 191, Sarah McCurria. Ms. McCurry will be given one minute to speak. Ms. McCurria, are you there? Are you there? Okay. Let's move on to the next speaker until we can get that worked out. Barry Jacobs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council members, I, council members, I'm here like so many of my neighbors to speak out about what we've seen in our city this past week. Thousands of Dallasites have rallied as is their God-given and constitutionally protected right to express their outrage at the death of George Floyd. And for the most part, they have done so peacefully. There has been some violence from a handful of protesters, but by far the worst behavior has been that of the Dallas Police Department, who have deployed tear gas, pepper rounds, rubber and foam bu bullets and other munitions against innocent people. Cops have a right to defend themselves from imminent threats, but they should never strike out indiscriminately against criminals and innocents alike, including people who had nothing to do with the protests but were merely passing by. What we witnessed on the Hunt Hill Bridge this week was what one would expect from an authoritarian dictatorship, not a police department pledged to serve and protect a free people. I believe that this is the most dire threat our city and nation have faced in our lifetimes, and it is shocking that it should stem from the ranks of our police department. Council members, I beg you, rein in the DPD while you still have a city to lead. And as I have a few more seconds, I'll add that the militarization of our police didn't just happen on its own. It occurred with the complicity of this council. Just last month, this body voted 15 to nothing to authorize DPD to acquire two military-style armored personnel carriers. Examine your conscience as council members and make this stop. Thank you. Thank you. Your next speaker, Speaker 32, Mark James. Mr. James. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? You can. Go ahead. All right. Thanks for having me, Mr. Mayor and the City Council. My name is Mark James. I'm a resident of South Oak Cliff. I'm not going to continue to repeat what everyone else is saying, but I do want to know this. I'm about solution. What can we do on both sides of the ball to avoid this from happening? Our community is hurting for understanding and change. Please be transparent with us. I'm also a member of the Texas Organizing Project. Uh, we would like to have a seat at the table to at least voice our opinion and also to see what we could do to help the community. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, 113, Nora Soto. Hi, my name is Nora Soto and I live in District 4. 
After a weekend of Dallas police deploying tear gas, pepper balls, and rubber-like pellets on thousands of community members coming together in grief and anger, I am done waiting for Dallas leadership to act. Police actions towards protesters this weekend prove that their training to de-escalate tough situations is not enough. They are not well equipped to handle peaceful opposition from the very citizens they have sworn to protect. I demand that city council call for the immediate resignation of Chief Hall. I demand that city council does their part as public servants to stop the sanctioned murder of black people by defunding the Dallas Police Department and reinvesting our public funds to serve our communities. More officers, guns, jails, and prisons are not a solution to long-standing problems of racial disparities. I demand that City Hall works to radically transform the city and end the war on black people now. Dallas will remember your actions during this time. Thank you. Okay, where are we now on uh, speakers here? So, Next speaker, 159, Joel Weisinger. You'll be given one minute to speak. Joel Weisinger, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. You have one minute. The DPD has recklessly and unnecessarily endangered protesters. They've repeatedly tear gassed, shot at, corralled, and detained peaceful protesters. Know that attempting to further suppress, and actively harassing, detaining, and assaulting protest protesters won't silence us. We're done being brutalized and then blamed for it. We're done with your passing the buck to the same organizers and community leaders you're otherwise happy to ignore. You must more aggressively move on the eight count wait and other guidelines laid out by Campaign Zero. There's no excuse. You must at long last reconvene the Community Police Oversight Board. It is incomprehensible to me that y'all have deemed it non-essential. And Mayor, if you could pass on to the Chief, the CPOB isn't a bullet point on her resume. She didn't fight and bleed for it the way that others in this community have. That board was created by and belongs to this community. It doesn't exist to be led or controlled by a police chief. Its express you, purpose sir. is to oversee her and her department. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Who's next? Michael Verderet. Valderas, number 147. Michael Valderas, are you there? What, are we okay on the connection? Okay, we're moving on to the next name. Boyd, number 77. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you. On March the 7th, 1965, hundreds of protesters marched on across the Edmund Titus Bridge for the fight for civil rights and equal protection under the law in America. 55 years later, on June 1st, peaceful protesters in Dallas marched across the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge to protest police reform and police brutality here in Dallas. They were met with tear gas and excessive force and military style tactics on the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge by the Dallas Police Department. To repeat, tear gas is a chemical weapon, by the way. On June 2nd, the Dallas Police Chief Renee Hall publicly defended their position, tactics, and actions in regards to peaceful protesters. My question for the mayor, the city manager, city council, and the police chief is that is can Dallas offer nothing better? We want you all as a council to denounce these tactics used on June 1st by the Dallas Police Department under the command of Police Chief Renee Hall and as far as her resignation. We all want all we want is change. And all we want is justice for those who have been targeted by the Dallas Police Department and for all those who live in the city of Dallas. I thank you. Next speaker, number 80, Valerie Eton. Mm 
Valerie Eaton, are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? Eaton, are you there? There we go. My name is Valerie Eaton and I'm a citizen of Dallas District 3. I'm with the Party for Socialism and Liberation and we condemn the lynching murder of George Floyd by the Minneapolis Police Department. We extend our deepest sympathy and solidarity to his traumatized family and community. The Party for Socialism and Liberation believes that our country's problem with police brutality is not just due to a few bad cops, it is the capitalist system itself and its apparatus of repression. The police, courts, prisons, and the laws that value private property over lives which represent a systemic disease that requires a systemic solution. We are a militant organization in more than 90 cities organizing to fight for a new system, socialism, where the capitalist repressive state is overturned and a new anti-racist state replaces it to truly serve the people. Socialism means that a job, free health care and education, and a home for all are guaranteed constitutional rights instead of commodities out of reach for tens of millions. Only by organizing together can the working class aim to eliminate hopelessness and landlordism, racism and police brutality, war and oppression, poverty and hopelessness. I urge our mayors and council members to invest in community policing alternatives and to disarm, defund and disband the police. Lastly, please understand that rubber bullets, beanbags and tear gas are by no means lethal weapons, non-lethal weapons. They can absolutely kill, maim and hospitalize people and have already done so to many American citizens around the country. You have got to take these weapons out of the hands of the police. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, number 64, Corey Toriani. Corey Toriani. You can hear yes. me? Go ahead, sir. County Dallas resident. I'm representing myself today. I'm speaking in solidarity with Black, Indigenous, and communities of color who are underrepresented and overpoliced in our city and across the country. I'm urging Dallas City Council to recognize that we need systemic changes to the systemic problems of racism, police use of force, and police militarization. While it is important to make small reforms like the ones suggested by City Manager T.C. Broadnax, it's not enough to simply make incremental changes. There's a growing movement across the world to defund local police, and I think you need to take this seriously. Defunding DPD means freeing up resources for homelessness, social support programs like education, after school programs, parks, green spaces, and rehabilitation. These are some of the things that build a stronger social fabric with greater social mobility and less people locked up and beaten up. Now, that is your time, sir. Thank you very much. Next speaker, number 74, Noel Parks. Noel Parks. Noel Parks. Hi. Hey, there are you. There you are. Go ahead. Jordan Parks. Okay, we got two different parks on the same page. Jordan Parks, go ahead. Hi, my name is Jordan Parks. I'm a resident of the of District Eleven. Current events have made clear that our city's budget's disproportionate allocation of funds to our police departments has proven inefficient in reducing crime and instances of police brutality. I'm asking that moving forward, the city place as great a financial emphasis on social programs that elevate the most vulnerable amongst us, like affordable housing, community outreach programs, public transportation, and initiatives to end homelessness, all of which time and time and again have proven to be a greater, more wholesome approach to protecting our citizens. Our police have failed to hold the worst amongst them accountable and our tax dollars have enabled their behavior to continue without negative consequences to them or to those endorsing their behavior with their actions or their silence. As citizens, we place our trust in the police to use all the resources our hard earned money have afforded them to safeguard the community. And instead they have turned those resources against us when we demand that they be held accountable. As city leaders, the responsibility falls on you to keep our community's best interest in mind. I implore you all to realize that the weight of your decisions will either pave the way to unity and harmony or to greater division. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, number 36, Rashida Howard. Rashida Howard. Ms. Howard. Mr. Mayor, yes, can you hear me? Continue. Yes, I can. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Uh, my name is Birgitta Howard, and I am appalled and disgusted at not only DPDs, but at police departments across America for their unjust, unnecessary, and continuous show of force um, against Black people since really the existence of slave patrols in this country. Um, the fact that the DPD led peaceful protesters on the bridge Monday night, not only to physically and psychologically attack them for nearly six hours, was all we really needed to know about their entitlement in the city. And now I really, really speak to you citizens and protesters across America, um, and not only in my city, but the outlying cities. Um, according to Dr. Laney, the things that we need to actually fight for are not only defunding the police, um, but really relinquishing qualifying immunity. Um, so I really implore you to really think about what we're actually protesting for. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, number 88, Melanie Gibson. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Ma'am, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. My name is Melanie Gibson. I live in Council District 1. I'm here because I believe we need changes in policing and an allocation of resources in our city. I'm here to support the 10 changes in policy offered by the In Defense of Black Lives Dallas Coalition. At the top of that list of changes is increasing investment in mental health services, funding mental health and social workers to work with the police, and funding employment programs for housing assistance and job training. I'm counting on you to stand with the Dallas community. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sarah Hess, number 30, speaker number 30. Yes. I want to begin by condemning the mayor, the city manager, and the national police chief for all the leadership and complicity in police brutality. No question that the city of Dallas exists at the center of police brutality in the U.S. and must answer for the terror it inflicts upon its black residents day in and day out. How many black people must be murdered in cold blood in their homes before the city wakes up to the true nature of the police? Dallas is no stranger to incidents of trigger-happy police officers that have been trained to racialize and kill black people for no other reason than being black. The police have never protected the people in, com in the communities they claim to serve. They are an inherently violent racist institution that stems from their exception. You have created a violent militarized system used to oppress black and brown communities. Police departments have been able to hide their crimes under the vibes of being helpers of the community, but in reality, you have been the ones to historically oppress and criminalize black, pe black and brown communities. Prisons are filled with individuals who are used for profit, yet there are no initiatives set in place to help ex-convicts re-enter society. Y'all don't care about the people, you care about the statistics and feigning that crime rates have lowered. In 2018 alone, the DPD used up, near, up to nearly $5 million on the city's budget. $5 million that could and should be spent on our community, not on a state-sponsored terror group. I demand that the city of Dallas defund and demilitarize the police. No more military-grade weapons to use on the people. No more funding the killers. If you actually care about us, defund the police and invest that money into our community. Stop hiding behind your private military that you call the Dallas Police Department, Mayor Johnson, and actually use the money to help the people. Thank you. Next speaker, 144, Michael Morris. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Please continue. Okay, great. Hello, my name is Michael Morris. I live in District 1, zip code 75208, and I'm a university professor in the community. I'm speaking in defense of Black people's right to live well and thrive. While I'm appalled at DPD's use of force this past week's police brutality protests and their instigation of violence, and while I am here to echo demands that my council member Chad West call for Chief Hall to immediately stop DPD's harmful escalation tactics and terrorizing of protesters, ultimately what I am demanding is that Dallas do what Minneapolis City Council is currently considering, fully disband the Dallas Police Department. What House Representative Ilhan Omar said earlier today about the Minneapolis police is also true of Dallas Police Department. They have proven themselves beyond reform, and it's time to reimagine public safety. Chad West, do your part as a public servant to stop the sanctioned murder of black people by defunding and disbanding the Dallas Police Department and reinvest our public funds to serve black people, our communities, and working people. Our officers, guns, jails, and prisons are not a solution to longstanding problems of racial disparities, injustice, and police violence. I would demand disarming police as a solution, but police didn't need guns to kill George Floyd, Eric Garner, Sandra Bland, Freddie Gray, or others. 
Not only are police officers unable to re be responsible with guns, but they cannot be responsible with their own vehicles or their own bodies as weapons to kill black people. I stand with In Defense of Black Lives Coalition of Dallas and their platform that demands DPD disinvestment, the immediate depopulation of Dallas County jails, prisons, immigrant Thank detention centers, much, and sir, juvenile facilities. Time. Thank you so much. Next speaker, number 56, Kedra Flowers. Kedra or Kedra Flowers. Kedra Flowers, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, please. I'd like to say that diversity, respect, equality, and trust are not laws that can be legislated. They are not skin colors. They are mindsets. They are relationships. Chief Hall has demonstrated this week that she does not have the ability to take a stand to mend the relationships that have previously been broken in Dallas between the DPD and the community. She does not have the tools to mend the damage that was here before her. And further, she is creating additional damage by the decisions, statements, and overall tone that, with which she is dealing with an already hurting community. It is time for Dallas to move forward from its history and create a new future. And I trust that your team will begin that process by making a clear statement of intolerance for this type of treatment for our citizens and a continued respect between the uh, DPD and our community on a go for it basis. It's going to take all of us, but you can start by taking a stand right now. And as everyone else has said previous to me, we are watching and we will make a decision based on the reaction of this leadership team to what is happening in the city of Dallas right now. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak and I thank you for listening to us and considering what you have heard today. Thank you. The next speaker will be number 74, Noel Parks. Okay, let's try that one again. Noel Park. Noel Parks. Okay, let's move on to the next if they're disconnected. We'll try again. Angelica Andrade. We're here to give a one minute speech. What number? Number 204. Angela Andrade. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm muted. One. Yes, Miss Andrade, you have one minute. One minute? It's starting now. Am I unmuted? Yeah, you, we can hear you, ma'am. Please continue. Okay. Thank you. I have one minute, you said? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hey, check it out. I'm in the county jail, right? And this coronavirus, we're on quarantine. They put out six people already for the coronavirus. And there's one more. You're down to 38 seconds at this point. Okay. There's a guy who older man in here. He's 59 years old. He's just sitting here on a parole hold. He's been in here almost two months. He only has a parole hold. They dropped the sentence in the charge. We've been on quarantine for going on five, six days, something like that, seven days. This old man's so scared of the coronavirus that he sticks with his mask on. Oh, he don't ever take his mask off. He's only here on the floor when the parole's ignoring him. Is there any way I can help him? All right, thank you. And also, we need cleaning supplies. You know, the sales ain't giving, like, we ain't got no spray bottles, no, no, no disinfectant. We, we haven't been able to clean the showers in a month. Now, only one. Thank you very much. That's your time. Who's next? Who's? Christine Weisinger. Go try that you'll one. Be given number 176. You'll be given one minute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank okay, you. Okay, I've been protesting in DFW for four years, fighting police brutality. I saw the, the memo yesterday on what was referred to as real change from the city council. I see what appears to be some sort of attempt at addressing most of Campaign Zero's eight can't wait. However, I find the words restore trust and build relationships in policing laughable. DPD has spent the last week eroding what little trust they may have had. On live video, they are repeatedly seen attacking pro peaceful protesters. They literally, literally shot out a young man's eye. I have seen no evidence of a desire to de-escalate, 
but in fact, anything, if anything, I think DPD is attempting to incite riots and cause harm to citizens. And might I add that in every protest I've been to, they come to us. If there's black people, they always approach us in riot gear and try to intimidate us. Um, I think we need to defund and disband DPD. We need to get rid of Thank the you, so-called Thank chief Thank you very hall. much. That is your time. Thank you so much. Next speaker, speaker 103, David King. David King, are you there? David King, are you there? Okay, Mr. King. Mr. King, are you there? Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can now. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. You're Great. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, City Council. Uh, I just want to briefly say that this situation really boils down to a choice between police enforcement and community investment. Uh, we know we have a limited budget. Uh, we know the issues that have been going on in the last few years, if we've any, any of us have been paying attention. Uh, we, we're beyond the pale in terms of resolving the underlying problems, as opposed to trying to enforce our way out of it. And I think that's been made so evidently clear in the response to the protests uh, that caused a young man to lose his eye uh, and multiple other violent occurrences that were completely unnecessary. I think the juxtaposition between the protests in Houston and the protests in Dallas says it all when the city of Houston can bring out 60,000 protesters and then they're joined by the mayor, they're joined by their other representatives and they have a peaceful protest through the whole process, 60,000 people. Here we're carting people off to jail and buses and we're the third largest arrest rate of protesters in the country. Uh, so serious things have to change. I think we all know that. Mayor, while I'm speaking, I do want to commend you on uh, signing on to the mayor's pledge for the Obama Foundation. I think that's an important step. Uh, I think that shows uh, that you understand the commitment necessary. Uh, we have to turn that into real action and real impact. Uh, so to that effect, the implementation of that is going to be key. Uh, this has to be top priority. This has to be out in front uh, until we see positive change or nothing else is going to be able to move forward. Thank Thank, thanks so much, Mr. Mayor. Thanks to the City Council. Number 27, David Villalobos. Uh, yes, hello. My name is David Villalobos. I'm a campaign coordinator with the Texas Organizing Project in Dallas. I'm here today as part of the 674 people that got arrested on the Margaret Hunt Bridge. From my years of peaceful protesting, I've never been shot at with any type of bullet or smoke. And we were fired upon without warning. The crowd went to chaos, but then gathered the composure, uh, took a knee while peacefully chanting, hands up, don't shoot. We were then pelted with what we thought was tear gas. Um, this is symbolic of what's happening in America right now. The Dallas Police Department is meeting the issue of police brutality with more police brutality. Someone could have fallen off the bridge. I was put in a dart bus with about 30 other people with no regard to social distancing, also taken to Frank Crowley Courthouse in a paddy wagon with nine other people. For the record, I hope I don't have COVID-19 because of these interactions. Through the lens of failed leadership by the Dallas Police Department, our organization is calling on the uh, city uh, to fire uh, Chief Hall. Um, but we know that a personnel change will not be enough without the city changing policy. So we want um, immediate demands to stop firing rubber, sponge, or any type of bullets at protesters, stop arresting protesters, invest 1% of the police budget to the Community Police Oversight Board to get true accountability, adopt the eight can wait about the in defense of Black Lives Coalition platform. Um, this is not Greg Abbott's Texas or Republicans' Texas. This is the people's Texas, and we are ready to fight like hell for it. Until then, there will be no peace in the streets uh, until there is justice for our people. Thank you for my time. Thank you. Next speaker, 169, Pamela Grayson. Ms. Grayson, you'll be given one minute to speak. Oh, I'm muted. Hello? No, we can hear you. You are not muted. Oh. My name is Dr. Pamela Grayson. You all have seen me before. I marched on Monday night, and I was in the crowd. I was shot in the head with a rubber bullet. I have a big knot on my head. 
I am dizzy. I can not work this week, can barely take care of my child. We were peacefully protesting. I did not deserve to be shot. And even when I came off that bridge, your police leadership indicated it was excessive force and should not have been done. This is a problem. Now, Friday night when I marched, I was hit by the Dallas police. And I don't believe terminating you, Chief Hall, is the issue. You have a deeper rooted issue than Chief Hall. But I guess y'all will figure that out next week when my paperwork hits your legal department. Y'all have a good day. Thank you very much. Next, next speaker. Michael Valderez. Thank you. Can you hear me, Mayor? Yes, we can. Thank you, Mayor, so much. My name is Giovanni Valderez. I'm a former vice chair of the Cultural Affairs Commission. And I am speaking to you today uh, to acknowledge the, the mass inequities that we have in our city. 83% of people in poverty are black and Hispanic in Dallas. And I think this points to the systematic racism that our communities of color have faced over decades. So it's just, it's easy to say, well, listen, but I think council members have to take action and listen to our constituents or their constituents and, and and really be willing to invest in education, healthcare, and community programs, and really overlook, I mean, really examine the police budget and see how much money that is actually going there instead of our communities. And I think also we, council members need to hold themselves accountable and start at the police oversight board and who they've appointed. There's a few appointees that initially did not believe in the board. I mean, I think this sends a wrong message to our community members. And I, I hope that is your time, sir. Thank you very much. Greer, we have a Dale Greer. Hmm. Number speaker number one, CO2, Aaron Greer. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Aaron Greer. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so I'm a resident of Dallas and Oak Cliff, and I, I mainly wanted to speak today to voice my support for the 10 points offered by the Coalition in Defense of Black Lives. Uh, we've heard a lot today about trauma and the lack of confidence that many residents of Dallas currently feel in the police, public safety, and civil liberties. But I wanted to just note that we also have an opportunity to do something really exciting in Dallas. The 10 points outlined by the Coalition in Defense of Black Lives sketch how our city could be visionary in redirecting public funding to truly serve the public and in establishing clear protocols limiting the police use of violent force. Imagine a city in which the first responders to a mental health crisis are mental health professionals unarmed and appropriately trained. Imagine a city that saw public safety as encompassing public health, unpolluted neighborhoods with public space and recreation centers, and equal opportunities for quality education and jobs. We could be that city. Even as the recommendations from the coalition in defense of black lives are visionary, they're also extremely achievable. And so I'm just uh, speaking today to urge the city council members to work with community leaders in this coalition to realize the recommendations. Thanks very much. Thank you. We'll now go to speaker 191, Sarah McCurria. Ms. McCurria, you'll be given one minute to speak. Hello, this process has been unorganized and disrespectful to us as residents and citizens of, of this city much like the Dallas Police Department had the behavior of the Dallas Police Department over the last week. We need to defund the DPD and invest in the community. The unrest that we are seeing now is 50 years overdue, and it will continue until we have the moral courage to make different decisions in the city. The fact that we spend almost $500 million on a police department and continue to add more resources to them every single year is unconscionable. 
Too many people have lost their lives and been traumatized. You all are all held responsible for your decisions in this moment, and history will remember you. Do not quote Martin Luther King. Do not quote Malcolm Thank X you, that when is your you time. are not making the same Thank choices. You. Mercedes Fulbright, speaker 108. Are you there, Ms. Fulbright? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, is this Ms. Fulbright? This is Ms. Right. I am here okay, hold on one second. Hold on one second. We need to just get the clock started over again. Um, Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, one yeah, minute and a half. Hold on one. Don't start yet. Go ahead. There you go. Clock started. Go All ahead. Right. Hey, this is Ms. Lady Fulbright. I live in District 7, South yeah. Dallas. I'm here to demand on behalf of In Defense of Black Lives Dallas that TC Broadnax put out a budget recommend recommendation defunding DPD ASAP. The um, 21st century reformist policies that he put out yesterday. Yeah. Is not enough. And we're also telling DPD to stand down, Chief Hall, stand down, quit attacking peaceful protesters everywhere we are. And also for the city council to put out ASAP a demand to defund DPD and find the ways that we can invest in people's lives and keep them safe. We know how to keep our safe in the city of Dallas. Police does not. Dallas Police Department does not know how to do it. Mayor Johnson, we need to be involved to make sure to tell DPD to stand down now, as well as Cut the police force, cut the Dallas Police Department now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, say it again. Uh, speaker 104, Nancy Johnson. Trustee Johnson, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Your time's running. Thank you. Uh, I concur with my colleague, Trustee Salisu Calkin, earlier. Um, I supported the protest. Uh, I was there uh, on the bridge and participated in the, port the protest. During the protest, there was a bullet uh, that was shot, a pastor that was there that was trying to leave, but was told that he could not leave until the march was over. When we got ready to go on the bridge, no one uh, told us that we would be in violation. Yet our chief of police said that we were warned. That statement was not true. I felt like it was uh, the Edmund Pettus Bridge March, a peaceful protest that turned into an attack on uh, peaceful protesters. Where bullets were uh, shot, tear gas, aggressive arrest, all while there was children um, on the bridge. Uh, that was totally unacceptable. Uh, I've supported chief, uh, the chief of police, but I cannot support this action. Uh, children were in danger. Uh, innocent people that was peacefully protested was in danger for no, for no right, for no, for no reason. Uh, I, want to under, I want to understand this and say this, Mayor Johnson, I do support you. I do support our city uh, council. Uh, and I, may, I do understand that you may not be over our uh, police chief, but I believe the city manager, uh, uh, Mr. Broadneck Eels, and I'm asking someone to do something about this. This was reckless behavior uh, from those who had authority, and we should not let these things happen. Who gave the authority for bullets and gas, tear gas, to be uh, thrown at innocent people that was peacefully protesting? I do want to say thanks to uh, the city council and those that did speak up uh, to make sure that uh, people were not That's arrested. your time, Thank you. sir. Thank you. Next speaker is speaker 130, 130, Irene Avina. Hello? Yes, ma'am. You can okay. go. Hi, I'm here to speak on behalf of those who are tired and weary. It is exhausting to bear witness and see the loss of innocent Black lives. As a trauma-informed social worker and an ally of the Black community, it is my duty to take a stand and do what I can to support change. 
The systems we have in place and policies we invest in only benefit those in power while perpetuating violence, alienation, and oppression for the marginalized, specifically black lives. So really, the systems we have in place are only re-traumatizing Black people. In order to truly help those heal from this trauma, we must first help establish a safe and secure environment. This can be done by reallocating resources, funding, and responsibility away from DPD and toward community-based models of safety, support, education, and prevention. By doing this, we are working towards curating safety and security and empowering Black lives in their communities. I work as a therapist, and when I'm with clients who are stuck, I try to remind them that what they've been doing at this point isn't serving them anymore, so maybe it's time to try something different. What we're doing now hasn't worked, and it will never work. We need to try something different. We need to try something new. Otherwise, we will continue to lose lives and perpetuate this cycle of trauma. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Sean Paul Segura. Sean Paul Segura, what number? Sean Paul Segura, are you on the line? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is uh, Sean Paul Segura. I'm a community activist and recently a uh, candidate for U.S. Congress, Texas 33. I've grown up here in Dallas and uh, have seen and witnessed and experienced repeatedly uh, mistreatment from the police, and it, it largely affects our black and brown community, and I'm glad that y'all are speaking up against racism. But I would also like to say that the, the issue is compacted by racism, but the problem with abuse of power and lack of accountability and transparency and making the police actually be part of our community and not against our community are the real issues. So I would like to see some policy changes to make, you know, we have an opportunity to make DPD more transparent where we can uh, create policy that prevents Dallas Police Department from withholding video evidence that has been held back in the past. So let's say if someone's accused of a crime and the video evidence will show that the police uh, claims are false, thank the you, DPD sir. can withhold thank you very much. that video. Thank you. That is your, that's your time. Thank you so much. Frankie Wilson. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, thank you so much again for um, coming back to me. I appreciate it, and I appreciate the work that you all are um, doing to try and address this. My name is Frankie Wilson. I work in strategic marketing and communications for city governments and small businesses throughout the city of Dallas and beyond. <clears throat> I'm also president and leader of the Applied Behavior Analysis for Social Justice Organization at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology here in Dallas. As a professional speaker, I often express the fact that you cannot change something that does not belong to you. And it's evident that the ownership of the present circumstances, which involve police brutality and environmental changes within our city, belong solely to our city leaders and police department, which is a grave misunderstanding and untruth. The issue that our city and others throughout the nation endure are those that belong to all citizens and not a chosen few. With that said, I'd like to suggest a seat at the decision makers table for our behavior analysts, our psychiatrists, our social justice leaders, and communications professionals. Therefore, if we own our actions together, we can create a better experience for everyone in the city. Thank you. Thank you.
for Yasmin Munoz. Yasmin Munoz, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you so much for your patience. Go ahead. Okay, I'm Yasmin from District 3, born and raised in Dallas, Texas. I'm a Dallas County Community College graduate and currently attend Georgetown University in D.C. As a young woman of color from a low-income household, I feel an imperative duty to observe, reflect, and act against against any injustices that occur in a world filled with advancement. One of the ways I've worked towards bettering myself, my community, and my nation is by advocating for the rights of people that have purposefully and systematically been grossly neglected and mutilated for generations. After being tear gas on Saturday's protests, and then being one of the hundreds detained on the Margaret Hunhill Bridge for enacting our First Amendment right to peaceably assemble, I'm demanding that you support the 10 changes in policy offered by the Dallas Coalition of In Defense of Black Lives. Solidarity does not equal action, and you cannot continue to passively accept the violation of our constitutional and human rights after running campaigns of equity and capitalizing on the color of your skin to get elected. We demand a change of policing in Dallas. Black Lives Matter. Renee Hill must resign. Structural changes must be made. Thank you. Thank you. Your next speaker, 143, Joey Casciano. <laughs> 143. Joey Cassiano, are you there? Mr. Cassiano, are you there? We see, we show you as connected, but we can't hear anything. Are you muted, per chance, Mr. Cassiano? Let's move on until we get that resolved. David Olivas, number 45, speaker 45. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Yes, please continue. Thank you. My name is David Olivas, and I represent the Mexican American Bar Association. As lawyers, we swore an oath to support the Constitution of the United States and of this state. As such, we stand behind the peaceful protesters exercising their rights under the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. These peaceful protests provide productive ways to per for people to have their voices heard and remain fundamental to our democracy and country. Recent actions taken by the city of Dallas and partner gov government agencies in their handling of the protests, in particular the peaceful protests on Monday, June 1st, have us very concerned. As an organization, we ask the city to reevaluate their current conduct, to put policies in place and respect the individual's rights to protest peacefully and communicate those policies to, with the community. As individuals, we know the courthouse has limitations. Justice Thurgood Marshall delivered a speech before the annual uh, judicial conference stating the legal, the legal system can force open doors and sometimes even knock down walls, but it cannot build bridges. That job is between you and me. The country can't do it. The African and white, the rich, the poor, the educated and illiterate, our fates are bound together. We cannot run from each other. We but we cannot escape. We will attain freedom if we learn to appreciate and what is different in mustering and the courage to discourage, uh, to discover what is fundamentally the same. America's diversity offers so much richness, richness and opportunity. That is your time, sir. Thank you very much. Next speaker, speaker 190, Ruth Torres. Ruth Torres will be given one minute to speak. Ms. Torres, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. There we are. Um, first of all, I want to say that I've seen a stark difference in the way um, police handled white protesters um, and the white hairdresser who violated a state and county ordinance on the stay home order during a worldwide health. Uh, crisis versus how, and they were completely in police officers' faces and versus how police treated the Black Lives Matters protesters. 
Um, I think that that definitely speaks volumes as to the, the intent. Um, there is a text, there's a code of ethics, and I'll read it to you. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve the community, to safeguard, sorry, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against violence or disorder. That's your and time, ma'am. Thank you very much. Direct. Thank you so much. Your next speaker is 184. Jawad Edgerson. Hello. Hello. Can, you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I just wanted to say I do not call for Chief Hall's resignation or dismissal, but I do advocate for her to see county, state, and federal officials as well as those in positions of power, privilege, affluence, and influence, the need to listen, take action, and practice equity. If the NFL owners would have listened and allowed players to protest in peace, and if the players would have band together with CAP to protest collectively, we might not be here today. If charges and appropriate punitive action would have been brought in the depths of Eric Gardner, Freddie Gray, Breonna Taylor, and countless others, we may not be here today. And if equity was delivered to the pandemic protesters who dressed as militia, they were armed to the teeth, yelling and spitting in officers' faces, they were not pushed, peppered, sprayed, smoked, tased, or hit with rubber bullets. If that would have happened, we would not be here today. Officials, please listen to the cries and wailing of peaceful protest. Please take appropriate action when marginalized people are dehumanized and please practice equity when engaging black and brown citizens. Um, thank you very much. Your next speaker, speaker 28, D'Angelo Bowen. Yes, this is D'Angelo Carvel Bowens. I'm a long-term resident of Dallas County here. And I was present on Monday at the melee at the uh, actual attack that was carried out by uh, the uh, Dallas Police Department. I just want to say that uh, I'm originally from East Texas, and I've seen many abuses conducted by various police forces across Texas. And uh, what I saw on Monday the 1st was among the top most ridiculous um, actions that I've seen taken by a police force. Um, we are outraged that uh, people who were peacefully protesting 400 years of racism and decades of police brutality were denied their basic um, constitutional rights to free speech and uh, to peacefully assemble. We could dim the police showing up to the protests in riot gear and shooting at peaceful protesters with sponge bullets and tear gas, which I'm emphasizing since some of the city officials are saying that that was not used, but I was actually choked out and almost fell over the edge by the tear gas. So I was one of the 674 people arrested, and what took place that night was a military attack carried out by DPD and state trooper forces, which are already unwanted in policing our city. Uh, most of the people were hit with rubber bullets. Um, who were hit with rubber bullets were hurt pretty badly. Um, smoke bombs were used and without even hearing commands. And um, along with the demands of my colleague, David Villalobos, uh, what he stated earlier, we're also calling on you, Mayor, and the city officials to quickly assemble a task force to seriously examine the outsized role police play in our city and thoroughly, thoroughly look sure. into Excellent. divesting Thank from- much. Thank you so much. Your next speaker. They couldn't hear that. Would you repeat that, Madam? Next speaker is 111, Kevin Hicks. Kevin Hicks, are you there? Okay, let's try to. Move on to someone else until we get that resolved.
65. Christine Hopkins, number 65, please. Yes, Christine Hopkins. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. I live in Oak Cliff in District 1. I am an employment discrimination attorney and have volunteered in the past with the ACLU, the National Lawyers Guild, the Dallas Gay and Lesbian Association PAC, and the North Texas Dream Team. I support the 10 demands and the In Defense of Black Lives Matter Coalition's uh, letter that Clay Jenkins posted on Twitter after he took the bold step of meeting with civil rights leaders and actually finding out what they want from the city. By using authoritarian tactics like kettling, tear gas, rubber bullets, and mass arrest this past week, the DPD took the city's welcoming welcoming city's ordinance and tore it to pieces and took the First Amendment of our Constitution and tore it to pieces. The city council needs to stop listening to DPD's excuses and take military gear away from the DPD. Give our police monitor full access to internal affairs records, end cash bail, end agreements with ICE, stop using state troopers in Dallas, create a public registry of officer discipline just like there is for attorneys and doctors, require that DPD pay civil judgments and its share of city attorney services out of its own budget, replace citizen oversight committee board members that constituents do not trust, extend the duty to intervene to a duty to report all misconduct and racism by fellow officers, and end the type of blue line. Thank you so much. Made. That's your time, ma'am. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Your next speaker, number 67, Maria Garcia. Hi, this is Maria. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you so much for your patience. Go ahead. Of course. My name is Maria Yulizma Garcia, and I'm from District 2. I'm here to speak to the response DPD has shown over the protest of the police killings of Breonna Taylor, who would have been 27 today, and George Floyd, plus countless black lives taken at the hands of police. I'm here to state that as a constituent of the city, I'm at a loss for words at the failed leadership that has continued to show while people practice their First Amendment right. We have heard the multiple firsthand accounts of protesters met with militarized force. If the city shot money into programs for our community as fast as they shoot black and brown bodies, we could move the needle towards a city that collectively supports residents who don't fall into a six-figure bracket line. Defund Dallas police, invest in communities, and DPD, please delete your account. I yield my time. Thank you, ma'am. Your next speaker, speaker 182, Eileen Maxson. Ms. Maxson, you'll be given one minute. Okay. Ms. Maxson, are you there? You get one minute. Ms. Maxson, are you there? Let's move on to the next, or at least queue up with uh, someone. Eileen Maxson, are you there? Okay. Your next speaker is item uh, number 42, Ronald Wright. Mr. Wright, Reverend Wright. Dr. Mayor, it's a pleasure you and the city council, it's a pleasure to to see this here, and I'm going to be very quick. Uh, 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 quick. It was I saw you this morning, and that was outstanding. But Mayor, I want to know that what the unfortunate, unfortunate, and sad part is that there were many young men who were right here in Dallas in the state of Texas that have lost their lives with the police department, and so their their names should have been mentioned as well as Mr. George Floyd, but because uh, I don't know if the Young generation, no or not, but Texas has always been the litmus test for this country. Now, I want to quickly say this to your protesters. I support them, and we appreciate them, but they need to understand if you're going to protest, you're going to need to be able to accomplish something. And if you're not accomplishing anything, you're just wasting time. Now, as it relates to how you were treated by your police department, that's unfortunate, and I would like to sit down and meet with you and 
it, it relates to the city manager and the police chief. You and your city council should take care of that first. Then that's when we are brought in, and I'm going to try to meet with each and every one of them anyway so we can discuss this. But I thank God for up to 20-some-odd years, Mayor Johnson, that I've been fighting this alone, that we are finally waking up and realizing what's taking place. And I want them to focus that it's not just how they were treated in the protest, but it's how blacks have been treated for the last 22 years for simply being black. Thank you, and I'm going to get in touch with you and your city council members. But as far as Broadnax and the, your chief, who I tried to meet with, the educator, she told me she wasn't interested in the history. So if you don't know where you came from, I can you know where you're going. God bless you. Thank you, Deborah. Your next speaker is 182, Eileen Maxson. Eileen Maxson. We're going to try this for the third time, and then we got to move on. Ms. Maxson, you'll be given one minute. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Your next speaker is 205, Julia. One minute. You'll be given one minute. Yes, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Uh, first, I'd like to say Black Lives Matter. Secondly, defund and demilitarize the police, including the use of tear gas, pepper spray, flashbang grenades, and rubber bullets. Police actions on Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge were appalling. And why am I skeptical of Chief Hall's implementation of duty to intervene? Because she justified the use of all these escalating tactics. Who's checking her? Take the money away from the Dallas Police Department and reallocate to community health and safety measures for historically disenfranchised, but the community solve the problems that the police force could not. The brutality must end and we must fix this prejudice system. Black Lives Matter, thank you, and I yield my time. Thank you. Next name. Next speaker, 183, Lynn Maples. Ms. Maples will be given one minute to speak. Lynn Maples, are you there? Good afternoon, yes, Council. Um, I'm a longtime resident of Dallas, more than 40 years, and I wanted to address Mayor Johnson. I've seen most of your interviews on television for COVID-19 and the protests, and what I would like to say is the people of Dallas deserve transparency when you ask a question because that's the way we would understand um, what's going on instead of dancing or skating around the, the answers, not ever giving a direct answer. And then to Chief Hall, I understand she has a difficult job here in Dallas, and I would like to see her address all people here with compassion, just as she did the city she came from, um, and I'm sure the community that she and, you know, you and both all of us have been raised in. Uh, I would like to know, I would like for you all to know and understand the people that have asked for her resignation, that it takes more than just these few months or a year or two to get a uh, police department turned around or any particular job that city officials hold. So I would thank just thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Hey. Your time. Mm -hmm. Your next speaker, speaker 94, Molly Bear. Molly Bear, are you there? Molly Bear, are, are you there? Okay, let's move on to the next name while we figure that out.
Jocelyn Garcia. Speaker 202, Jocelyn Garcia, for one minute. Are you there, Ms. Garcia? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you so much for your patience. You have one minute. My name is Jocelyn Garcia. I represent District 2 in the city of Garland. My family came to Dallas as immigrants, leaving everything they had in the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness in the land of the free and opportunity. That now seems like a cruel joke. I believe in a Dallas that creates equity for people from all backgrounds, specifically black people and other people of color, engaging in the community while holding space for them to thrive. Dallas was founded by white supremacists, but Dallas was built by my brothers and sisters of color. We will no longer kneel in the shadows of systemic racist oppression, but rise up against hate crimes, racist violence, addressing murderous police brutality, and use of excessive force, discrimination in the workplace, disproportionate funding for schools in black and other POC communities, negligence of POCs in medical institutions, the, pollu the polluting effects of fossil fuel mining, toxic emissions from factories which poison the environment, air, and water systems of predominantly POCs populated communities, impacting their health and negligence of POCs in jails, prisons, and immigration detention centers leading to premature death by COVID-19, an act of racist bioterrorism. We would demand you defund the DPD and invest in overcorrecting for these pitfalls. Thank invest so in much, education man. and Thank physical and mental much. health resources for the safety of traumatized black people and other time. POCs. Thank you very much. Angela, uh, speaker 106, Angela Foss, or Faz, F-A-Z. Hello, hello. Yes, we can hear you, go ahead, thank oh. you so much. Hi there, yeah, my name is Angela Foss of District 1. Council member Chad West and I have something in common, Pride Month. But people forget that Stonewall in 1969 was the first ever Pride, and it was a riot against police brutality. And in honor of Pride, we remember Dallas's own Malaysia Booker, and today in Dallas, justice has failed again. I stand with Our City, Our Future and their platform to divest and defund the Dallas Police Department. We have many murderous officers that still serve today. And we demand that DPD should not be the first responder to mental health calls unless a firearm is involved. We remember Clinton Allen. Officer Clark Stoller shot and killed Clinton Allen in the back and is still on the force today. The murder of George Floyd let people in the streets. We don't need more guns, pepper bullets, or drones. We don't need more losing, people losing an eye for standing in the streets because another black man was killed at the hands of an officer with a knee on his neck. We need radical reform, something that is realer than real. We demand City of Dallas explore alternatives to police response. We need to work radically to transform the city and to end the war on black people now. We demand, we demand divestment of DPD and for the immediate resignation of Chief Hall. And Mr. Mayor, I'd like to also point out that Shingle Mountain is still there. And people are, are uh, their lungs, I mean, people of color are being affected by Shingle Mountain. So thank you for your time. We need to defund the police. And thank you for having this talk. I hope you do something. Thank you very much. Your next speaker is Speaker 53. Arayaman, Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I just want to start by saying that when we hear stories from our personal friends who felt like they were led onto the bridge, attacked on the bridge, and held on the bridge, uh, when we see stories of someone who lost their eye while peacefully protesting, when we see videos of officers throwing tear gas at protesters who are kneeling peacefully, uh, it just doesn't increase trust in our community. And uh, I think there are opportunities for us to do better. And I wanna voice support for the 10 ideas put forward by the Dallas Coalition of In Defense of Black Lives. Uh, and in particular, I wanna uplift the ideas about shifting funding from policing to alternatives, including employing mental health professionals to support people and respond to some police calls, employing various counselors who can help improve quality of life and help residents lift themselves and their communities up, providing funding for 24 hour rec centers, investing in arts, parks, libraries, et cetera. Um, you know, public safety comes from having a strong community. And I would ask the city council and you, Mr. Mayor, to invest our tax dollars in building a strong community. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. Your next speaker, speaker 57, Melanie Talmadge. Ms. Talmadge, are you there? Oh. 
Hello? Can you hear yes, me? We can hear, yes, we can, Ms. Thomas. Go ahead. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. I'm a special education teacher for Mesquite ISD, and I live in Dallas. I was arrested and detained for hours on Monday, June 1st, for peacefully protesting against police brutality on the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. The only escalation that was made was from the Dallas Police Department. We were shot at, we were held down, and we were gassed. I don't want you to think I'm exaggerating, so I'll tell you, I have a seven inch bruise on my thigh from being hit with a rubber bullet. Had it hit me a foot or two lower, who knows if I would even have a knee. Not to even mention the psychological damage this has caused for me. Although this experience was traumatic, it will never compare to the daily fear people of color are living in. If this is how I was treated by the police as a white female, I cannot even imagine what my black brothers and sisters are going through on a daily basis. If we don't have First Amendment rights, someone needs to just let us know. We are going out on the streets and getting attacked for exercising our freedom of speech. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna go back to speaker 94, Molly Bayer. Beautiful. Thank you. Don't mute everyone who's not um, speaking right now, if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, Molly Bayer, 94. Can you hear me? Ms. Molly, can you hear me, Ms. Molly? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Molly Bunner. I live in D1. I'm a public health researcher. I'm speaking here in solidarity with Black, Indigenous, and communities of color against systemic racism, police violence, and over-policing. We send hundreds of police each day today, wearing thousands of dollars of military-grade equipment to respond to protesters. I want to point out the research that shows that the fatality rate of police projectiles and the use of crowd control is 3%, approximately the same fatality rate as COVID. The permanent injury or disability rate of projectiles shown by research is 15%. Somehow, we can't afford to ensure healthcare heroes have adequate PPP when a pandemic, but we can afford to arm our city police against our citizens. Countless studies show that police do not prevent crime. Robust social services do. The most discussed solutions to police violence, like body cams or implicit bias trainings, simply are not proven to work. The eight can't wait reforms going around, Minneapolis PD had seven of those already in place when they murdered George Floyd. We do not need more police, we need less. We need demilitarization and more restrictive policies governing the use of force. We need crime prevention, and I urge you to defund the annual over $500 million DPD budget this upcoming budget season. Invest in evidence-based crime prevention, social services for our communities instead. Thank you. Thank you. Your next speaker, speaker 212-212, Eve Aragreen. One minute. Yes. One minute. Eve. Uh, it's actually Eva, EVA. Oh, Eva. Thank you. We'll get we back apologize. Back. No, you're fine. Let's go. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh. Hello, I am a current resident of District 1. I am happy to be living and working in community with some of the most beautiful people from youth to elders in our city of Dallas, Texas. As you have heard and clearly seen, we are deeply hurting. We have been in mourning. To see how little courage any of our leaders have had in this time in defense of black lives has been completely disheartening. We see you kneeling, praying, and even sharing pizza, but what will it take for you all to actually transform our city? At bare minimum, you can remove those on the Brady list from the force. We don't need more cops. We need you to invest in communities, in the people, the arts, mental health, and all of which will help us begin to heal in this process. Show us you actually care instead of letting white supremacy continue to run rampant. We want to thrive, let us. Let me remind you, we voted you in and can Thank vote you, you out. Much, Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, next. Members, it's going to be my intention to take a 30-minute uh, break at 5 o'clock to see if we can try to make some improvement with the technology to get this go a little bit faster and to let everyone sort of 
I'll take a, a short break and then we'll we'll come back. But we're we're gonna go for another 15 minutes or so, five o'clock, take a 30 minute break, and hopefully the remainder of the names will go faster because we'll have worked out some issues, okay? Speaker is Speaker 145, Chris Dowdy. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, Council Members. Go ahead, Mr. Dowdy. Thank Hello. you. Uh, today, can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Great. Doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, today, uh, I'm, I'm speaking to you just as a District 2 resident. Uh, I wasn't born in Dallas, but my, my kids were. My seven-year-old reads the paper every day. And I just want to know what you guys think I should say to him uh, to give him hope. If you think that what we've done so far is enough. He's a smart kid. He reads the paper. And uh, it's getting more and more embarrassing to try to explain to him why we keep making promises that will fix things. We keep trying the same things, and nothing changes. Uh, so he, you know, he sees what's happened the past few days. And uh, and we all know it's bigger than just one night on the bridge. Uh, it's the whole way we approach our problem and think we can reform our way out of it. And until we reallocate these funds and think about a way to restore community control to the people that really can make the best decisions about how to take care of themselves, we're going to keep having these problems. Uh, in 16, when Obama was here for the memorial, we all seemed to agree that police were asked to do too much. Seems like something we should take the burden off of them to do all things that social workers and housing should do. I think it's time to take a real serious look at placing a really big bet on a whole new way of doing things. So I ask you to stand in solidarity with In Defense of Black Lives Dallas uh, to consider their demands and make the changes that will actually make changes. I yield my time. Thank you. Your next speaker, Speaker 78, Stephen Harrell. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So when Dallas's budget for 2020 was approved, you, the city council, praised it because it represented a significant increase in investments in the Dallas Police Department. Mayor Johnson, you said that the budget, quote, positions our city to invest in our people so that everyone can share in Dallas's prosperity. But you've heard the truth already. Everyone cannot share in Dallas's prosperity. Dallas's prosperity has a cost, and Black lives pay that cost in mistreatment by the DPD and disinvestment of social services. Today, 100% of property tax revenue plus 30% of sales tax revenue goes to public safety, the overwhelming majority of which is allocated to DPD. And after years of giving in to police demands for more of our tax dollars to be diverted from public goods and social services into their budgets, including the pension that DPD allowed to be looted, what do we have to show for it? Empty tear gas canisters, broken eye sockets, and a crime clearance rate and community event attendance pattern that doesn't even meet DPD's own stated goals. Dallas needs a new way. This upcoming budget season, we need to divert funding away from ammunition and jails that will be used against us and toward health, safety, and education programs that will enrich the lives of every Dallas citizen, starting with the black lives that have suffered under the brunt of DPD's violence. I unequivocally stand in solidarity with the In Defense of Black Lives Coalition of Dallas and their platform. 
Even though I'm a white man, I do not consider myself merely an ally in their fight because this week has proven that their fight is my fight too. DPD's actions demonstrate how our fates are bound to each other's. No citizen of Dallas is free until all of us are free and nobody wins unless everybody wins. Now is the time to invest in a safe, thriving future for our city That's that is free of violence. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your next speaker is speaker 92, Elisa Webb. Can you give it one minute to speak, Ms. Webb? Ms. Webb? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Thank you. Go ahead. And I've got a city of Dallas address, so I've got a minute and a half. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Elissa Webb. I am a resident of Oak Cliff, local attorney, and today I address you as a disappointed citizen of the city of Dallas. On Monday, through social media live feeds, I watched as DPD engaged in a massive violation of the freedom of speech, the press, and the right to peacefully assemble. I witnessed peaceful protesters be constructively led by officers into an agency-created trap. I watched as local grassroots journalists like Smash the Topic and photographers were placed in restraints. I suspect that DPD's deliberate tactical response to protesters on the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge resulted in a gross waste of public resources and a significant erosion of public trust. I urge you to apply the following to protests that have taken place since May 29th. First, conduct a comprehensive use of force review for every incident or engagement related to the protest. A general order should be issued requiring officers who worked and are working the protest to document any use of force. This requirement already re exists for routine patrol and should not be suspended when engaging in crowd control. Second, establish a public complaint portal for police excessive force and civil rights violations during the protest. The complaints in this portal should be forwarded for investigation to DPD, the city of Dallas, Dallas County DA, and the Texas AG. Lastly, create a protest resource budget report. Provide a line item accounting of city and DPD resources deployed against protesters. Provide the same data points for other protests over the last 24 months. Each of these audit measures should result in a report made publicly available on the city and DPD's website. This is a call for transparency to rebuild trust among our black brothers and sisters, DPD, and the community at large. It is only with trust that we can seek safety from and with our guardians, establish equity in our practices, and enjoy the freedoms to which we are entitled. Happy Pride and Thank you so much.